Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good evening, folks, and welcome to a very special episode of Buttered Kernels, where tonight we will be traveling back to Halloween night in 1977. Ooh, spooky, I know. But tonight isn't just for any other review, but a review of a film that has, well, given a new and unique and fresh life into the horror dimension. A circle of hell so sinister, so evil, one that you dare not look away from for tonight, we will look at... Uh, well, that was really weird. Uh, let's get into it. Hey, movie fans, I'm Matt, and today we're talking Late Night with the Devil, starring David Dasmalchen, Laura Gordon, Ian Bliss, Ingrid Torelli, and is directed by Cameron and Colin Carnes. I think one of the best things about being a movie fan is when a film comes along seemingly out of nowhere with a trailer that just grabs everyone's attention. The excitement, the anticipation, all of those feelings we get as movie fans who just want to partake in a film experience that looks like it's just one massive mind trip. And uh, Late Night with the Devil is definitely one hell of a ride. Set in the backdrop of a late night talk show, the film follows the ambitious Jack Delroy as he invites a reportedly possessed girl onto the program in an attempt to boost ratings. And without spoiling anything, there are other story aspects that are a little too eerily in line with some of today's wildest conspiracies. Rather than follow the typical formula seen in many horror films, Late Night with the Devil presents these themes offering a truly unique perspective on the supernatural. I can't remember a film that has played with these ideas before in this manner. This innovative approach breathes new life into the genre and will absolutely keep you engaged and intrigued throughout the whole film. And despite the film being set in 1977, I can recall a time during my youth when late night TV ratings battles were still relevant. From the aesthetics of the talk show set to the visual effects of the supernatural occurrences, the film effectively captures that retro vibe of the time period. This nostalgic atmosphere adds layers of storytelling and enriches the overall experience. One of the most intriguing features of Late Night with the Devil is the different use of aspect ratio and camera lenses to convey different moods and story elements. The way scenes are altered to the events unfolding on screen is, is a visual feast and the directors create visual cues that enhance that narrative and will immerse you further into the story. And this creative technique adds that depth to the film and showcases the director's attention and care to detail. The directors really do deserve a lot of credit here. All right, enough of the technical stuff. What about the scares? Perhaps most impressively, Late Night with the Devil succeeds in delivering some genuinely great scares. These aren't necessarily the loud, obnoxious, in-your-face type of jump scares, but it's the atmosphere. Through this combination of tension and eerie visuals and finely crafted suspense, the film creates this feeling of dread that lingers throughout the whole film. Now, if you've watched any of my other reviews, there's a really good chance that I sat there and complained about the pace and the length of the film. The directors skillfully navigate between these calm, nice moments during a talk show to these high energy moments during live TV to these tension filled commercial breaks that just create this dynamic rhythm that kept me on the edge of my seat. The film clocks in at just over 90 minutes and this effective pacing contributes to the film's immersive tone and it ensures that you will stay captivated from start to finish. Finally, Late Night with the Devil is exceptional based on the acting displayed by the entire cast. David Dasmalchen has been extremely steady at work since first appearing as one of Joker's thugs in Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight. He delivers for me easily his best performance as the main host Jack Delroy. He is tasked with playing with so many different ranges of emotions and actions in this film and flawlessly takes what's in front of him and gives it his all. He truly is an exceptional actor and though he may not be like an A-list movie star, he's definitely someone that I get happy to see when he arrives on screen. Laura Gordon and Ingrid Torelli deliver wonderful performances portraying the compelling doctor-patient relationship. Their on-screen chemistry is evident as they deal with the complexities of a live TV broadcast which is characterized by secrets and trust. And I have to give a shout out to Ian Bliss who plays the skeptic Carmichael Haig. 
He's so good in this, and you can't help but hate his character, but in all the right ways. You know, I couldn't put my finger on where I knew him from until I realized he played the possessed Mr. Smith from The Matrix Reloaded and The Matrix Revolutions. I'm so glad to see him still working today. His character, along with each other character, portrays an individual struggling against these demonic forces in their own unique way, and it feels authentic and immersive. I've used that word quite a bit today, but that's how it feels while watching this movie. So if you're still watching at this point, you can certainly tell that I love this film. It's one of my favorite films so far this year. Unfortunately, the film is also stained with a little bit of controversy due to the revelation that some of the still images used were actually produced by AI. AI technology is obviously a hot topic amongst various industries and understandably so. Now the directors have acknowledged that they experimented with AI in collaboration with the production and design teams to achieve the envisioned aesthetic for the film. And as someone who hasn't been involved in the filmmaking process, I can only imagine the immense effort that goes into bringing a concept to life onto the big screen. Now this film is, is an indie film. It doesn't have the backing of a major studio, so it's plausible to think that maybe experimenting with AI was seen as a viable option. Personally, as a content creator myself, I've utilized AI for certain aspects of these videos. It's not because the human effort isn't valued, it totally is, but rather due to the limitations in resources and my time. You know, balancing between being a dad and a husband and my professional responsibilities. While AI may offer some efficiency, it's also essential to acknowledge the hard work of the countless people who dedicated themselves to crafting something truly remarkable for film fans. And believe me, this film is totally deserving of that recognition. So yeah, I completely recommend this film to everyone. Whether you're a horror fan or just someone looking for a thrilling ride, Late Night with the Devil is a must watch. As always, I encourage you to watch the film and form your own opinions though. Let me know your thoughts about it down in the comments below and have your voices heard. Also, if you enjoyed this review, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more movie reviews. Your support is greatly appreciated. Next time, we strap on the proton packs and get to busting some ghosts in Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. It's a good thing I'm not really a fan of the franchise, otherwise I might be biased towards the film. I'm in trouble, aren't I? Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys at the movies.